walk trying to take out what is supposed to be left and not left and do that well there was an over x on this whole project supposed to be of 30 inches all the way down the whole road well the water lines are so shallow some of the main line is only four, 11, 11, 12 inches to the top nut on a 16 inch valve that was done by a previous contractor back in the 90s. The water main services, as he said, at his house we hit yesterday just trying to go down 24 to get to be able to base it up. Dave Miller's been down there, BJ's been down there, the road is tapered two ways because of the water line side. We cannot cut the 30 inches out of because the water line's right under us and we have hit it, even with the motor grader tire breaking water services because it's so shallow. And the other side is down to depth. Yes, it is a mess. Yes, we're trying to get there. We've had snow a little bit this week, so we're trying to dry things up. Everywhere we went to try to get depths to put the Marify down when the engineers come up and inspect so that we have a good base to put it on, we've hit water lines with tires, with everything. So at this point, we're trying to get everything dried up, trying to put Marify and try to base this road this week so we can try to at least overpave and keep putting ass or putting concrete curb and gutter and sidewalk in so by i'm hoping by the end of the week we're at a, like a six inch difference from curb they'll keep pouring curb and if we have to overpave we will overpave come back and saw cut the rest of the curb and gutter in which is very easy to do but fighting everything is mr allenberg mr miller can attest the water lines and everything on this road there's a lot of unknowns and everything was so shallow that we can't get under anywhere that we need to go for the overheads. So they're trying to get it to where everything lays down and you guys get a good road, but we've been fighting a battle with the water lines. So that's where that went. And like I say, stating again, the two month difference between bid to bid was when you didn't have a water truck. I mean, yes, I told you we would get a water truck up there when we had the contract signed. We did do that. We watered three times a day after that. I apologize that nobody had a water truck up there, but I mean, I didn't have a contract with anybody to put a water truck up there. So that's what nobody understands is there was two jobs, not one job lumped together. I understand it's a total mess. We feel bad. If I see you with groceries, like I seen the old lady with groceries across the road, I packed hers to her house. I've done everything to try to help. I've talked to you. Yes, you were upset. I understand why you're upset. And I've been cool with every single cool. one of you, like, because cool. you guys are just doing the job. Now, full, you know? full, fully understand why you're upset, and, and I have no, I, I would be upset too. That's what I'm saying. I, I am not upset with anybody speaking in here about what's going on, but nobody knows the underlying conditions of why it was like that. And we will try to have Halloween on that street for you. I can assure you of that, because we're going to bust our butt this week, as long as we have good weather the rest of this week, to get the base in and get everything done. So, so that's my question is, is we're, we're in moisture season. How, how, is this go, how is the quality of the product going to be with a lake at the bottom of what you're trying to fill in and, well, and we'll, moisture we'll, in the road? And well, stuff we'll, like we'll that. dry that up, and that's, and that's why these guys are here, and that's why there was guys here on Monday from Night Peace Hole out of Elko that do compaction tests. I'm sure Mr. Quality Miller and Mr. Mr. Allenberg will make sure that as soon as we're putting all the lifts in, you have 90... 98, 99% compaction on the, on the top lifts. I'm sure Mr. Miller and Mr. Allenberg will make sure that your asphalt's coming out at the right temperature on a 45 and rising day when, they, when they, we put the asphalt down. And I'm, I know for a fact that they have break results on all the concrete that's getting poured on curb and gutter. And we've even went above the plans and dowled into the existing so nothing would droop. So stuff's taking a little longer because of the weather, because of what it is, soaking it up, but we are not trying to do a half-assed job. We're trying to give you guys a good product in the end. And as these two know, there was water valves that were not supposed to be where they were at. There was water valves shallow, all the water surfaces, except the new ones that were put in the last couple of years between us and the city were shallow. So they're trying to mediate that. And Mr. Miller even said yesterday that they were gonna send the city crews up there because there was three or four water valves that never been replaced that were still old that they wanted to have the city do in front of us before we do that. As of the water line hit yesterday on your, on your side, it was Nick and the city come and shut it off and we had your water back up. That, the sad part about it is water leaks real fast like that. We had your water up within 45 minutes. Yeah, so. Twice. Yes, it did. They nicked it, and it was just leaking the second time, so they got it again. They had to turn it off again, so yes, it was twice, but it was under 45 minutes to get it fixed because I was there. So I apologize for that. I apologize everything is low. I can't control what was put in in the previous years. We're trying to work around it.
I think Casey the minute said we need to know is, you know, you've got ten days. Mm -hmm. Can you have that project completed in ten days? I can have I can have most of the road completed. There might be some concrete valley gutters we've got to come back and do. Okay, I think that's what the residents are concerned mm -hmm. about. Yeah, I mean I mean that the, the base and the asphalt is gonna have to go within the next ten days. The as for the concrete, we may have to come back and do a little bit of concrete work to match it up. And I mean that's from trying to match existing curb and gutter and everything that are on there because we didn't take it all out. So you're trying to pour back to existing stuff that was there. Okay. So the agenda item was the possible extension. Uh, if, if you think you can have it completed by... Do I think I can have all the concrete and valley gutters completed? No. Do I think I can have 85, 90% of it completed? Yes. Depending on weather. And we have had three or four weather days that these guys have about. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Some of the first of all, you're right, Casey. This was a two-step project. The first one was funded by the city, CDBG. The second one was funded by this board right here. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the big headache right now. But my question is, and I'm going back looking at the engineering on this here. When NDOT done all their work, even when they come up by my house, and not NDOT, but they put in this fiber optic, the water lines were marked. Someone went up there, or whatever they do, witching wire or whatever, and marked where the water lines were. Did you get that up? Uh, did they, engineering firm, provide that with you for the mark the lines, the blue paint? I'm trying to figure out why we got into this jam. Well, I mean, you're right, it's down there 36 inches, but didn't somebody mark that don't dig here? I mean, it's, it's just common sense. I, we, we had USA. Did, you know, we called it MS Rallworth and they, they marked the power, they marked all that. These guys marked the valves that they knew were there. I mean, your water services. There are some valves that they, I don't even think that these guys or Carl knew were, knew were there. So, I mean, that was just, they were found over X in the dirt out. Is the but those are the ones out in the drive path, in the road that you come across. But every house has to have a turn on the valve. Correct. The place. They were not, none of those were marked. For okay. getting blind. And I find that's it. You were going blind. I, I feel a failure on our engineering department on that right there. The engineers on that. Uh, Jim, can I say something there? Sure. As a part of the project, in the specifications, the contractor is required to pothole to know where that water line's at. Which we did. Pothole the main line, but not every water service. Because the depth, when we were regrading out, and they seen it, the dig tape, Mr. Allworth was like 16 inches down all over the pipe. So. That was when we got scared. I mean, I, I invited everybody out. I mean, I invite you out, Steve out, anybody out here to come look at it. Mr. Cameron seen what we were having to go through yesterday. I mean, Jake Gubler seen the valves by his house. And that was not based in engineering or anybody. That was a previous contractor that installed it years ago. I mean, where some of those lines are, I mean, and it's very hard because some of the lines that we call, some of the lines go out of the meter box, four foot deep to the to the corp stop on the, on the water line. Some of the water lines go out 90 go up and into the water main. So if you're six inches off, you're you're gonna hit it, you know. And and the over X trying to get good sub base was what was really hard jumping around and trying to find everything because everything is, is a lot of it is not where it's supposed to be. But I mean, then if you go pothole every, somebody everybody's water service would have been there another month, you know. So we're just trying to go around to get the engineer happy to where everything is stable and we can put dirt back in. When you, when you hit a corp stop, did you hot tap it or did you shut the water line down? Shut the water line down. <clears throat> okay, did you See. put a new corp stop in? Yes. What did you do with the old one? Was it left in place? No. It, we did, it never broke them off into the main. It just broke the end off, so we just screwed it in and put new pipe. So, no, it, it, never, it never totally damaged your, your service tap. It just broke your corp stop end off. So that was all replaced, and the city crews were up there involved in every one of the shutoffs and turnoffs, which was Carl's crew. You know, and I look at this year, I drove up there plenty of times, trust mm -hmm. me. You know, a couple of the first things, like I mentioned, you got the city project, which is the sewer line. Mm -hmm. This is an RT project, RTC project, which we're here for. But one of the things I really have an issue was, was the lack of safety features up there. You know, you had holes with cones around them, but some kid on a bike can drive right through the cones. You know, I, I think there was a real issue with that. 
not gonna wood, thank God. Nobody's gotten hurt on that right there, you know. That's a good thing. But I think there should have been more attention. Again, I'm, I'm putting a lot of this back on our engineering department. You guys are supposed to be the supervisors, putting out hints. These guys are dirt workers. Hey, Casey, just get some more safety features in here. You know, I, I think that was a big issue. Hey, we need to get a lay down here and have you move your equipment up the street away from these people's homes. Up on the corner where the Y is, perfect place. You opinion, my opinion, you could have trammed some of that up there. But somebody had to give this man, his company, some guidance on, hey, we're having complaints. City Hall had a lot of complaints over the dust thing. You're right, that was terrible. You know, I don't live down there, but, you know, you hear it. You know, what we don't want to do is, is like Kyle's talking about going there and put a big push and then they put asphalt down and come back and dig up because we have a leaking pipe underneath the road. Right now, that one gentleman, he said, sure, our frost level is 22 degrees in the morning. Some of the pipes are this far, so it's pushing down right now. Correct. So we're, you know, and then you're going to start putting uh, your base back in there. You have to have some water to compact it. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing then when this cold weather? The frost is already going to be 36 inches down there because that's the void you're filled right, in. Right, and your water lines are so shallow that exactly they can't get right. right. So here we go again. When we can break up, you go down there, we finally get a road in there, an asphalt road. What we got to do? Go, go, go back and dig it up. And you do not want to do that. That's exactly. And that's one of the biggest things on the other city roads. We've corrected a lot of that with pre-planning. Uh, I don't even know the right temperature for the asphalt because is it going to come out of Elko or where no, it's here? It's 45 and rising. Okay, that's the that's the temperature. Yes. That's the big. So that's a question I'd have to ask. Engineering would have to come in and step in and say, wait, the temperature's not right. Stop. We don't want you to go out there and put asphalt or concrete down if the temperatures aren't right. Because we got to come back. It's got to crack, break all up. So <coughs> you're really on a, you're on the risk right now. By the end of the month, temperature going on. So I get we get down to this. Or what are we going to do if the temperature don't hold up? Right now, it's looking good, the short window. I'm all your phone, probably different than my phone on weather. So I guess down to what are we gonna do if the temperature don't hold up? I think we base it, get it ready, so they got at least a the road. And when the day happens with the temperatures, we pave it Monday. So that would include doing 30 some inches of base. base? Yes. So at least they'd have a smooth road. Yes. And what are you gonna do about the access to the residents? Yeah, well, that, when the base comes back up to curb line, then they will have access back to their sidewalks. There'll be base still on there and dig outs and poured, but we can contain and do the concrete. We have heaters and blankets and all that. So we plan on rolling that down the road. They're pouring today, right now as we speak to them. Okay. What about the uncapped rebar? If it snows, that's I will, I will, I will address that today with my guys. We get like Ms. Stater mentioned, Halloween right around the corner. Mm -hmm. We gotta do what we can to protect these little goblins and so forth. I agree. So. Those are my comments on it. You know, I, I realize you're up against the gun right now. I think there's a lot of this. Like this was a job of this nature was the first one your company's attempted. Well, just the asphalt we've attempted. We've done other every side. other part of it okay. before. Yes, we provided all the concrete for the NDOT project on Main Street. We provided all the base. We provided all of all of that work with with Q and D construction on Main Street. So the only thing that we have not done is paved, and but. We have the people to pay. Okay. One, one thing I would throw out, I'm not a contractor. I'm just retired now, looking back at this for 48 years. If you get into another one of these projects, put more pressure on your engineering company. You know, let them help you. I, I feel, again, you know, I won't even go back into the compaction thing. I think that was a big mess. And I'll, and I'll say it, I've already told BJ, this is my feeling. You didn't have an, engine, an inspector walking the whole thing. Things were sinking all over the place. You had to come back. I had one individual in a brown Chevy stop me every time. Go up and look, go up and look. And I go look, and here it is, a big sinkhole. How did that get by? You know, that's part of the first, the sewer project, which eventually delays the ongoing project. Because every time you've got to come back, fill up, fill up, fill up. So, again, use your resources you have with you. The city, all we are, the, can contribute on this here. Again, this is an RTC thing, is expertise on fixing water leaks. We don't have nobody to say compaction or nothing. Right. So, and I know BJ want to respond, but go. But I, I do want to respond. You know, you come in and you talk about some safety issues and everything else that's going on. You know, the contract, it clearly, we are not responsible. The RTC board is not responsible for the safety or anything else out there, what they're doing. It's their responsibility to maintain 
OSHA standards and everything else that's going on for the safety of the people. It's, it's, it's clearly defined in the contract what our responsibilities are and what the contractor's responsibilities are. And the things that you mentioned, those are the contractor's responsibility for their safety things. And so just because we go out there and if we mention something or if we don't happen to mention something, you know, that doesn't put us or the RTC on the hook because we're not, that's not our responsibility on the projects. You know, which I understand that, BJ, but it gets down to a common sense thing. You have an inspector on site walking by, the rebar sticking up. Hey, can you put the caps on this right here? I mean, do we have to, we need to have common sense. Some of the people in the, in the audience says they talked with Casey and they didn't like the response. Well, a lot of people talk to me and don't like what I say either, you know. But you got to have some common sense and look out for the fellow uh, health of your of your citizens. Well, I mean, and you know what, I mean, it, it, it's a given. I'm taking both. We do miss things. I mean, when you're there every day and that, you do miss things. I mean, so... Am I taking responsibility for no rebar caps on there? Probably, I have to for my company. They're not on there, but they do miss things. They're going, it's cold, they're trying to get done, they're trying to wait for the concrete truck, they're trying to pour out. So yeah, they do miss things. I mean, 10 eyes are better than two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm not telling you how to run your business. No, no I'm no. saying 10 eyes are better than two, I agree with you. And I just think, you know, I mean, every, and I'm not comparing you with anybody, Q and D, they have a morning, Group work meeting with okay, safety first, blah blah blah. Be aware, you know. I don't believe there was an injury at all on the Q and D job, and we don't want to have an injury on yours either. But you know, practice makes perfect. And Correct. So the future, I hope we won't have nothing. But yes, sir. I, and I appreciate yeah. your concern on that, and we will 110 percent strive to do better. So that was my comments on what are we going to do for the possible extension. Here's enough of the blame game. We all understand everybody's got a, a piece of the pie, everybody, somewhere. But the, the item here is a possible extension of the contract. You stood right there and you said you can get the paving done, get the road up to uh, uh, livable, and yet there's still going to be other stuff. So what we need to do as a board, and correct me if I'm wrong, is we need to act on an extension. So you're already saying that you're, gonna, you're not going to be able to get all this shit done before excuse my friend, before the 31st. <laughs> right, depending on what, yes. If we can get a, pass, a, a product out there that's satisfactory to the citizens in that section of Murray Street, that's what we're here for to offer you, I hope, to maybe come up with an extension. But in the meantime, instead of everybody saying he should have done this or they should have done this, the safety's right, Jim's right. We need to get barriers up there until hopefully for just a week and we can get this road paved. We as a board right now are on an agenda item to see can we give an extension. We personally, I don't. I you said you can't make it, so we have to offer uh, an extension period of time. Can you go 30 days, or we, we're not going to say eight years, right? But uh, can you get it done as we're discussing? Uh, you've already said what you can do, and you can only do what you can do. Can you get the rest of it done, weather permitting, in 30 days? Yes. I think that's reasonable. I mean, I'm not asking the world every, everything to be done tomorrow, but if we can get that road up to standard and up to where these citizens can get to and from their houses and their driveways and go back in in the next week or the next 10 days, what is today, the 20th of right. right? In the next 10 days, you get the, the, the street up to where the citizens can live and get to and from their house. Yes, and we get my suggestion, we'll, we'll make a motion later, is 30 days after that, allow you that much more time to come and finish all the other valves or the sidewalks. I don't know what all is entailed in the project, mm -hmm. but I would like to have it all done before the 1st of December. Yes. Uh, if that's, I don't think that's unreasonable. What I've talked to EJ about and Dave was about the possibility is uh, let Casey go ahead and next Tuesday, if we need to, call a special meeting again to actually see how long you're going to need. I disagree with that. Why have an extra meeting? We already know that he can't get all of it done. So let's just set the extension right now while we're in this meeting. I'm sure most would agree with me, but I would rather give him the 30 days and have it all done. I would rather, I know you guys all disagree with me, but I'd rather give him the 30 days. It's my job. Did you get that? I got but, it. Why come back in 10 days and, and ask for an extension? Let's offer the extension now to the to the 1st of December. We already know what it's going to be. We already know you can't complete all of it. But we want to make sure that 
What you can't do in the next 10 days, you can complete the 30 days after. You get it done in 15, that's great. Right. That's great. No, I think that is more than sufficient enough. No, Jason. I, I'm going to, right now, I'm going to make a motion. That my, 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 my question that I have, and just going back to what the things that were coming in here, is sometimes the frustration from the amount of guys and the steady being there. So I just hope that with this extension that you'll be able to provide a more steady crew up there during this. Well, and BJ, what, what were they going to do, though? They're pouring concrete with them. We're been, we've been waiting to pull both sides of the road down. So they got a blade operator and a loader operator. So put 10 guys on the curb watching them. Well, I, I mean, I'm asking you because, but your plans also say to mill out 30 inches of the road. And then you couldn't put the water lines in that and then skip over it. It's your problem. Pothole the water lines and good luck because now we got to go this deep on this side, but still go this deep on this side. Hence why the, the deal's like that. Well, uh, I mean, the, the plans are what the plans say and what I did isn't what we're doing. No, that's where the, the valves, where the water lines all buried like they should have been the code. No, they're not. Come look at them. I mean, everybody's invited up there. The, the, the project is proceeding in very similar to the way the project prior to what down below there was. You know, that project had a bench in it as well, the prior blocks down below, you know, because of the water line issues. And so, so what's, what you're seeing out there isn't something that, uh, you know, wasn't have been anticipated or whatever. Um, you know, so I, I don't have a problem. I understand that there was a few things with the water line. I, I have no disputes over the fact that there was a few things with the water line. Um, but I think it just goes back to the frustration at times is, it, you know, that water line doesn't account for all the days that were not worked on that site, is all I'm trying to say. And so I think it's just the, you know, the board's willing to come and step up here and say, hey, let's come in, let's get these projects done, let's work together and get it done. And I think that the frustration of the people is the fact that, you know, it appears that there's times when the contractor's not there. And, 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 there, and there was, we, we, we did have a bout of COVID, and I called you and told you that where we had three, four people with COVID, did, did we want them to come to work? No, we did not. So they stayed at home just like they do at the mine or anywhere else, and they got a doctor's clearance 10 days later to come back to work. So yeah, we were probably five days, six days there, shallow, and I told, I can't remember, I told you that. So it was, it was communicated. You know, referring to Richard's comment on the extension, I really believe you get the road done, you know what you need to do by the end of the month. But we still need to, again, you're going to have to push like a son of a gun because people park the cars there, the cars are happy, but the people walking up banks right. and so forth, the uneven sidewalk, right. that's going to be a real important. So when we, if we go with an uh, extension, extension, in my opinion, should be for concrete work. Correct. And, and, and the laying down of the asphalt. Yeah, we're, we're laying yep. it down like that. I so, agree. So, again, the road, they can, if we can get it done, they can park on it, drive on it, everybody drives by, you're not spilling your beer, <laughs> coffee and everything, but right. the sidewalks are a real important right. thing right. for the, the people who live right. there. We want people, we want the mail to be delivered, so forth. Again, I'm not asking you to make a big promise on that, but if that needs to be considered in, in Richard's thinking about the, an extension. Yeah, I, I think that can be added in there that we stipulate the sidewalks and all that in there, but let's get started and get the people in the next seven to 10 days uh, able to drive up and down their street, get back and add the 30 days in there, and hopefully you can get it in less than 30, because weather is, again, going to be an issue as, as, the, as the temperatures cool. But if we set some type of a, uh, a, a, a barometer that says you're going to get this done by the 31st and you're going to get the sidewalks by with the 30-day extension, we understand COVID, and I don't, I don't mind. I don't like this blame game. I, I really don't. It's a bad deal that's going on right now. Let's fix it. Let's cut the crap out. Let's get the road fixed, get the sidewalks fixed, give you the 30 day extension. We don't need to come back here. If you have another issue, if it snows 10 feet, uh, Mother Nature, you, you can't stop that. Right. But let's, let's, my, my motion is going to be that, and I'm going to do that now, is that we, uh, we uh, offer a 30-day extension to JCR to complete to 10 days to complete the project that you're on right now, and then an additional 30 days to complete the sidewalks and all the other stuff that's involved in there. Anything that comes up that's a hiccup with a 10-day out there that you cannot work because of 10 feet of snow, you have to come back and ask again. But we, we don't need to meet, meet, meet. We, you got 
you got until the 31st to get the, the road straightened out, to get these people back in their driveways. Then the 30 extra days, up to 30 days, uh, let's just use a December uh, 1st date uh, to have that completed. Is that, is that reasonable? So a motion to uh, complete the job at hand right now in the next 10 days and the 30 day, up to 30 days to complete the sidewalks and that stuff in there. Is that I have one question? Okay. Is your concrete man here, Sean? No, he's okay. The question I ask about that is, you got an expertise. Sean got an expertise on concrete. <coughs> the heated pads and all that. But again, I don't know. If you start laying it down, and then we start getting cold weather, the middle of November, what will those concrete pad insulate? We, we, we have heaters to ground, actual ground okay, heaters. Right. That's all I need to know. But thank you. Okay, so I've made a motion. We have a motion. We have a second. One second. No discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye, right, Case. Okay, and uh, like I say, the more the merrier to come up there and look, too, just so you guys can see what we're fighting. I think one of the other yesterday. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, people. All right, approve the RTC minutes of August 12th. I read the rules and finally made a motion to approve. Second. Motion and second on the favor. Aye. Aye. Okay, back to public comment. So I want to come up first, real quick. I'm with JCR as well. But, um, you want to name your name, Charity? Charity March with JCR. Um, my question so the people that live on Murray Street, what's the standard depth for a water line? Like the top of pipe, Barry, what's your standard depth? The city's standard depth is five foot. And we're dealing with 11 and 12 inches. Correct. So I just want you guys your to know. You're 11 or 12 inches to the top of the nut, but the top of the nut is still another. I, I have pictures that to the top of the pipe is like 22, 23 inches. Okay, but you said 11. Okay, sorry. Top of nut is 11, top of pipe is 22, 23 inches. So I just want you guys to know what's been the battle. No, don't want to point fingers, don't want to blame anybody. But my other concern with that, when we go back and rebase this up, it's tested, it's impacted, we pave it, what happens when those water lines now break? <coughs> Something that was done in 97, that was done incorrectly, was signed off by another engineering well, firm. Well, I think some of the, there's stuff probably done in 97 on the lower half, there's other stuff that is older than that. So, so my concern is on JCR site, when, now this has all been disturbed and moved around and compacted and recompacted, now what happens when that breaks? Knowing the depth of the water line. That's my concern. Is it going to come back on JCR? Is it just going to be a patch? That's, that's a big concern. So just food for thought for you guys. I know we we'll probably have to be addressed somewhere else, but that is a big concern. Thank you. Oh, good morning, Slate Sandborn, 1185 Murray Street, and I'll follow up with uh, my concerns that Charity voiced and Mr. Oliver voiced earlier. Um, my frustrations coming on Murray Street, seeing the project we did last year and this year, I find it asinine that we're, you guys are allowing it being acceptable to leave three foot pieces of sidewalk, three foot pieces of curb, and having the contractor <coughs> match that up. Knowing in the future that concrete is how old, be 50 years old, knowing in the future that that concrete's going to fail and we're going to have to tear the road up again to repair the concrete uh, gutters on Murray Street. And the other thing, you guys bounced around. We do have a building inspector in town. DJ said he put it in plans to where all the responsibility was on the contractor. Well, who's holding the accountable or the contractor accountable for coats? So going back right with Charity said we doing all this work, wasting all the taxpayer dollars, and we we're putting nothing back to code on, on the street. So in three to five years, we're gonna dig it up again and go through this. That's not lost the code. Okay, but is the water line to code? This isn't a water line project. That water line has been in there for many, many years. But I understand that, but once you go into that, and we're doing all this work, why aren't we addressing those issues? Because if this isn't a water line project, we do all this work and waste all the taxpayer dollars to go tear the road up in three to five years to address the water issue. Well, I think 
our information that we have on that water line, that water line is extremely confident because in the past we did a section where we were going to abandon that water line and that water line was so competent that we had to actually pay a contract on a past contract an extra to get rid of that water line because it was so competent. And so, okay, so that water line services? is very competent. Okay, okay. When you, the services to the houses, are they covered? Yes, because any they re, this contractor replaced all the services on okay. the last what he was saying. There's two contracts. There was a water sewer contract.